basically um, the, the project we were engaged uh, to come in and work on the facade of a building in New York City uh, that was built on the Upper East Side in 1960, 1961. And um, the building at the time was uh, really sort of state of the art luxury housing. Um, the rooms are very gracious and uh, the, the not so much designed to today's standards because the kitchens are very small, for example, but the bedrooms are twice the size of current luxury uh, buildings. Um, the, the building is white brick um, and this was a very popular material in this time period. We think there are hundreds of very similar buildings, uh, particularly on the Upper East Side, which is a, an elegant part of Manhattan. Um, this is the building uh, several years ago before we started the project. You'll see that uh, there's a sidewalk protection installed around the building because um, they had concerns about things falling off of the building. There had been very significant deterioration over time of the facade. And this gives you an example of the type of damage that was coming from the, uh, the thermal, probably mostly the thermal and, and water penetration in the brick facades. And um, you can see this is an example of the types of repairs that had already been done on the building. In New York City, we have something called Local Law 11, which requires uh, buildings every five years to do an inspection and repair. And uh, the tenants in this building had ongoing construction projects and repair projects with their building, and it was expensive and very tiresome. And <clears throat> you can see we did some probes to discover what was behind uh, the facade. And you can see there's, there's not even uh, an inch between the brick and the block backup. And we found that the block backup behind the brick was also in uh, very serious decay with a lot of air spaces uh, between the uh, between the blocks. And they had ongoing uh, challenges of um, air penetration through the building. If there was an electrical outlet in the outside wall, you could put your hand there and you could feel the air, the cold air coming through in the wintertime. Um, so we were engaged to reclad the building. And the decision was made uh, based very much also on bringing the building up to meet uh, the current energy standards or the future energy standards of New York City. Um, the larger buildings are going to be required to reduce carbon emissions by a stipulated percentages over a series of, of steps between now and 2050. And um, this is an example of the, the, the building department will come around and, and pin your grade up on the window of your building. Um, so this building is evidently not doing very well. Um, so it was a very interesting challenge to, to do this recladding because even though it's a design uh, problem, it's a very uh, specific problem because you can't move or, or change any of the window openings because it would be affecting uh, the apartment interiors. But we wanted to um, get away from this really sort of super uh, functional exterior uh, where they hadn't spent any extra money to try and make the building elegant. And so we, we came up with this idea of, of uh, installing these uh, tiles above the windows at a slant so that we would reduce the area of the flat facade and make it feel more uh, frame-like and open and, and more contemporary. 
Uh, and we did some design studies to look at uh, how this would how this would look. Um, and this is an early uh, sketch showing the new construction. So we stripped off the brick and New York City zoning permits you to add to the size of your building, oops, with, sorry about that, um, without any, um, penalty as far as a permitted floor area. And so we put about four extra inches on the outside of the building. We added four inches of mineral wool insulation. And we are using a um, open rain screen facade system. One of the challenges of the design was that the owners of the building uh, elected not to change their windows because of uh, expense. And um, so we needed to develop a, a window installation that would permit windows to be uh, changed at a later date and provide enough access so that the waterproofing could be completely repaired and restored after future window replacement. So this was the image we had of uh, the, the finished building. And the design process was uh, interesting. We had to come up with what was our cladding material. We were looking at some uh, precast high strength concrete panel options. These are some design studies that we did. And then this was a tile pattern that we developed. Uh, it's a porcelain tile. And this is ultimately what uh, we decided to go with. Um, the idea of the design was to sort of play on the, the idea that it was fake stone by increasing the pixel size of a real stone image so that the pixels are about one half inch by one half inch. And it was kind of a, a way to make, uh, let's say something like a Chuck Close effect where when you're a distance away, you don't see it, but when you get up close, you realize that it's not stone, that it's actually uh, a fake stone. So here we are in Tennessee uh, developing the, the typical tiles. You can see in the background there, we were studying color. And then we made a mock-up on site testing our window frame design. Another challenge of the project was that the, the windows are not perfectly lined up from floor to floor or uh, between windows on a given floor. And so um, we had to take up the tolerance in the width of the, the window frame, which does vary from window to window to some extent. Um, and then this is another aspect of the project. Um, we know that vental, building ventilation is essential uh, to controlling energy costs, to control the ventilation. And the, the original building system uh, had really unregulated air intakes in all of the living spaces associated with the air conditioning units in each of the living spaces. And what would happen was that on the lower floors, you have a serious stack effect in the building. So the lower floors had a huge amount of air coming in and then the people, there was so much pressure buildup in the top of the building that uh, the, the, the pressure was actually made up by air coming out of uh, the bathroom vents. So this was not a desirable situation either. Um, so we had, again, this same thing. So what we did was we introduced these uh, dampers that regulate the amount of air coming into the building. And the dampers were introduced both at the window intakes and at the uh, bathroom exhausts so that um, the, the air in the building 
will be balanced. And this is this is the unit was installed underneath the uh, this is the air conditioning unit. It was installed below the air conditioning unit. These are the little vents, the little air intake vents on the exterior of the building. Um, so starting construction, the first step was to uh, do an, uh, the removal of the window sills, which had some asbestos material. And so we had to do an abatement of the window sills. And then you have the stripping off of the brick. We started working at the top of the building and they worked their way down. Um, and then here you can see we, uh, they repointed the block and then here they're parging the block and you can see this is the air intake below the window. And then here you can see the, um, the waterproofing uh, that marries the window frame to the wall and then the liquid waterproof goes over that. And this is what you want to get access to when you repair, when you replace windows in the future so that uh, you can replace and, and recreate this seal around the windows. And here, some of the windows were replaced. We have the sealant going in, we have triple seal around the windows. And then we have a uh, backer rod around some of the windows where the windows were very proud of the wall. Um, and then here they're installing the tubes that support the rain screen system. And then after they put the tubes on, you see they cut and install uh, the mineral wool insulation behind the tubes. The tubes are installed um, with special fasteners that um, minimize thermal bridging. And then on the left is the final stage, which is um, the installation of the tile. And then finally, we get the window frames going in. And this, I took this photograph about a week ago. This is the first part of the facade that's been revealed. You can see the mismatched windows because um, some people had kept their old windows. And here's the building from a distance. You can see this is just the only part that's been revealed. And then here we have um, the existing, this is uh, the uh, projected performance of the building. Here, we actually don't have our starting point, but just with this facade uh, and ventilation intervention, we're able to make the building compliant through 2034. And then future interventions could, uh, in, we could figure out how to get uh, an energy recovery ducting system into the existing shafts, which is going to be interesting, um, installing low flow plumbing fixtures to reduce the cost of hot water and reduce other electrical costs. And that's it. <laughs>